I hope you will like this video. Namaste. In this video, we will discuss about relationship, uh, relation of chemical potential with other thermodynamic properties in the thermodynamic property or thermodynamic parameter, whatever it is. So last uh, last video, we, last lecture, we discussed about uh, how the chemical, uh, the relation between chemi chemical potential gives energy and concentration. Now we will extend from that position uh, and we will we'll see how how chemical potential is related with other thermodynamic parameters like internal energy, enthalpy and uh, Helmholtz function. So let's first understand the relation between chemical potential and internal energy. We know G is equal to H minus Ts. If I substitute uh, enthalpy expression, I'll get uh, something like this U plus Pb minus Ts. Now I rearrange, I get uh, expression in terms of uh, internal energy internal energy now when i when i take uh, for infinitesimal change this expression becomes du is equal to dg minus pdv minus pdv plus tds plus stt this expression so again in in place of dg I, I'll, I'll pull up the expression we discussed last class which is uh, like vtp minus stt plus mu a dna mu b dnb and, uh, and up to n number of components whatever be the number of components then the rest other terms remaining same pdv pdp then this vdp and vdp cancels out and then the remaining terms can be arranged at tds minus pdp mu and mu a dna mu b dnb that is du now at constant entropy and constant volume these first two terms will vanish so i'll, I'll be getting like du is equal to mu a dna mu b dnb so i can alternatively write this expression equation 9 as mu i is equal to partial internal energy by number of moles of ith component when i take number of moles of ith component number of moles of other all the other components remaining constant so this is the relation between chemical potential and internal energy now let's look into the relationship between chemical potential and enthalpy again we'll start with this expression h is equal to g plus ts this can be arranged and uh, like if i take differentiation i'll get tg plus tds plus stt for infinitesimal change then again i'll i'll pull up the value of dg here dg is the expression this is the expression for dg so this um, SDT term will cancel out this plus term minus term that will cancel out the remaining term can be arranged here so at constant pressure and constant entropy this first two terms will vanish so i can write dh is equal to mu a dna plus mu b dnb now why we are uh, assuming that pressure and entropy are constant because we uh, the aim is uh, to find out relation between enthalpy and chemical potential that's why we are assuming that at constant pressure and constant entropy so uh, under under this pressure and entropy condition constant pressure and constant entropy condition the chemical potential becomes partial enthalpy over uh, number of moles of ith component again the number uh, entropy pressure and number of moles of all other components remaining constant now we'll go to relation between chemical potential and helmholtz free energy Again, Helmholtz free energy is defined as A is equal to U minus Ts. I will just rearrange and I can write A is equal to G minus Pb. So again, for infinitesimal change, I will get uh, this expression. Again, I will pull up the expression for Dg and substitute here. The terms Vtp will cancel out now. So the remaining term uh, looks like this. Now at constant temperature and constant volume constant temperature this term will vanish and in constant volume this first term will vanish i'll get uh, sorry here uh, there is a problem and this would be da so uh, and this is a mistake here it should be da now so chemical potential of ith component becomes partial helmholtz function divided by number of moles of ith component again the constant terms are temperature volume and all other molar Mole, uh, concentration terms are constant so 
uh, to summarize like uh, last class we discussed chemical potential and relationship of chemical potential and free energy and now we discussed uh, relationship of chemical potential with enthalpy helmholtz function and internal energy so this table summarizes all the relationships and what are the constant parameters now uh, chemical potential is related to free energy enthalpy helmholtz energy and uh, function and internal energy uh, generally in chemistry we mostly deal with um, free energy kind of thing this 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 kind this kind of expression now the reason is most of the chemical reactions are carried out at constant pressure and temperature keeping all this entropy pressure temperature volume and entropy and volume the uh, keeping these parameters constant are bit challenging but uh, mostly grossly the regular chemical chemical experiments when they are performed in laboratory pressure and temperatures are by default constant so people who are dealing who deal with chemical thermodynamics are uh, mostly focused or mostly interested in uh, expression of chemical potential in terms of free energy chains so that's why this uh, this expression is widely used in chemical thermodynamics so then oh, then we'll see one more relation relationship of chemical potential with entropy and molar volume uh, so far we have not discussed any entropy or molar volume so we'll discuss that again we know dg is equal to minus sdt sdt plus vdp plus sum over mu i dni any number of components can be there now so if i want to express this expression in terms of entropy i'll get entropy is equal to minus of partial free energy over temperature what are the parameters that will remain constant pressure should be constant and all the uh, concentration terms n1 n2 up to n number of terms whatever how many whatever be the number of components that should be remaining constant similarly if i express in terms of v i'll get uh, dg uh, so partial free energy over pressure then what should be remaining constant the constant thing should be this should be temperature this is a mistake here it should be temperature n1 n2 and all those things so now we, we obtained an expression of entropy and volume in terms of free energy change now we will again differentiate these two expressions so we'll again take partial differentiation of s and v both this expression with respect to the number of moles of ith species our aim is to find out chemical potential so chemical potential means we have to take a differentiation with respect to ith species number of moles of ith species and can obtain partial molar properties corresponding to entropy and volume so let's do that again i am repeating here we have to take one more uh, differentiation partial differentiation with respect to ith species so number of moles of ith species so what i'll get suppose first i'll take for entropy so again as i said uh, i've taken partial differentiation so negative of partial differentiation of entropy upon the ith number of moles of ith species what are the constant terms temperature pressure and all other number of moles uh, again uh, the right hand side also you have to take differentiation so again that can be rearranged the right hand side can be rearranged and uh, we get uh, so this uh, partial free energy upon number of moles of height species is nothing but chemical potential of height species we have learned this uh, this expression so i can substitute this as mu i so if i substitute this this term as mu i I'll get d mu uh, sorry partial differentiation of mu i over temperature at constant pressure and number of moles other uh, other than ith species. So this is all about relationship of what chemical potential of ith species and partial molar entropy of ith species. Similarly, we can also obtain if we take differentiation of this expression, this volume expression, then we can obtain a relation between chemical potential of ith species and partial molar volume of ith species so then then from here we will go to gibbs duhem equation so in the last uh, lecture we discussed that uh, when there is a binary component binary system means uh, a system consisting of two components a and b then total gibbs energy can be given as 
mu a n a mu b n b this we have discussed last class provided that constant the temperature and pressure should remain constant temperature and pressure could remains constant then total gives energy can be given as uh, this expression we have discussed last class so for infinitesimal change if i do differentiation then i'll get this expression out of this expression this is one suppose i'll take this as equation 16 we have also studied that at constant temperature and pressure the change in gives energy is given as this expression uh, from equation 9 we have studied this dg is equal to this one. so we have obtained this expression from total gives energy and but uh, there is another expression which relates dg so essentially equation 16 and equation 9 must be same because uh, g is a state function so both the equation 16 and expression equation 9 should be same so under which condition they should be same the only one condition that applies is na d mu a n b d mu b should be equal to zero when na d mu a and n b d mu b becomes zero then only both equation 16 and equation 9 will be equal suppose there are more number of terms then the other terms should be added up here so if i take a summation and express in kind of uh, summation so i will get ni d mu i is equal to zero i i ranging from one to n number of specific components so this this equation 17 is known as gibbs duham equation but it is important to note that the condition the condition is at constant temperature and at constant pressure so equation 17 is applicable to a special condition where temperature and pressure remains constant and this is called gibbs duham equation for a binary system i can rewrite this and this equation 17 and that is d mu b is equal to minus n a by n b d mu a so this is an important expression so what are the information this ex expression gives? We'll see. So the important takeaway points from Gibbs Duhem equation, like that is equation 17 and equation 18, are suppose uh, there is a solution or there is a mixture. Chemical potential of one component cannot change independent of chemical potential of other component. You see, from this expression, we can see that chemical potential component B is related to chemical potential of component A. They are not independent. They are uh, dependent on each other. Then what is the second takeaway? The is applicable to partial molar quantities of other thermal. So I can express, I can express this expression in, in terms of uh, other thermodynamic parameters. Like I can express this expression in terms of partial molar free energy partial molar partial molar free energy is yes. partial molar internal energy partial molar enthalpy partial molar entropy so i can express this expression i can i can uh, expand this expression to other thermodynamic parameters also for an example if we uh, if we get a similar kind of expression for partial molar volume then that expression will look like something like this dv dp is equal to minus n a by n b dp a this is partial molar volume of component b is equal to number of moles of component a by component b into partial molar volume of component a so this is a similar kind of expression is that of chemical potential similarly it can be applied to other thermodynamic parameters as well now what is what we can understand from this in a binary system a partial molar quantity of one component increases suppose the partial molar quantity suppose i take i take is a take it as a general term instead of saying partial molar volume i take i call it as a partial molar quantity suppose the partial molar quantity of component b increases then the partial molar quantity of component a must decrease so uh, similar kind of behavior we've seen uh, in the last class also we have we have seen the partial molar volume of uh, water ethanol system and partial molar volume of acetone and chloroform system so again this expression augments that uh, diagram that which we have uh, saw last lecture therefore gives to m expression can be used to determine partial molar volume of one component 
okay binary solution provided the partial suppose uh, provided the partial molar volume of other component is known suppose i know the partial molar volume of component a then i can find out partial molar volume of component b similarly if i know partial uh, sorry chemical potential of one component i can find out chemical potential of other component as well using this expression now if i integrate if i integrate equation 18 and if i integrate equation 19 then i will get mu b is equal to mu b star minus n a by n b d mu a and this 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 expression comes from equation 18 and this expression comes from equation 19 after integration after integration now mu b star and v b star are chemical potential and partial molar volumes of pure components they are pure components if i start my integration from pure component to like v b star to v b here mu b star to mu b then these are uh, these are the this is chemical potential of pure component b this is partial molar volume of pure component b so uh, this equation uh, 20 is again uh, helpful when when in experimental chemistry when when experimental values of partial molar um, of any one component are known and partial molar values of other component in pure state are known and the unknown can be found out suppose uh, if we know that vp and vp star then we can always find out find out this this the unknown component kind of thing so with this i'll stop here in the next uh, session we'll discuss about uh, change in chemical potential when there is mixing of ideal gases we'll see how the chemical potential changes when there is a mixture of um, gas mixing takes place and we'll also see the entropy of mixing and free energy of mixing. Thank you.